Hello everyone, I am Adam and thank you for joining me for this week's development update and community Q&A session. This is, uh, I think, let's see, what is this? This, Yeah, this is the first week of the month and I uh, try to, uh, you know, have once a month a full-on question one of these sessions. So this is that session because this is in between uh, some some other uh, big big news um, that, that that we're going to be sharing. So, mainly telling you up front that if you have questions today is a wonderful time to ask those because we should have plenty of time for them, and you can start asking those now in chat. Just put the word question in front of said question, and we've got a magic robot that uh, will collect those all, and I will get to as many as I have time for at the end. But Today's lineup, latest updates, what's going on with Pathfinder content. Uh, we have a new show this evening on the Airte. That is a very punny title for our after show for Children of Airte. And then uh, look at the Pathfinder Nexus Early Access Roadmap. And of course, the aforementioned questions. All right, let's jump right in to latest updates. Let me see here. There we go. So we are now live on the Pathfinder content side with a couple of new adventures, and these are really, really good ones. So first of all, we have the Fall of Plague Stone. Uh, this is a, a very popular adventure out there, and uh, so you can grab that now on Pathfinder Nexus in early access. Uh, take a look uh, and uh, you know let us know what you think about the Fall of Plague Stone. And then one of my absolute favorites is little trouble in big absalom and uh not just because i adore the movie over which this is doing a play on the title there but also because i love kobolds and this is uh and, and this is a kobold centric adventure and that is actually available for free. So this was uh, put out several, uh, uh, well, I guess a couple of years ago. It's not several yet, but uh, a couple of years ago for free RPG Day by Paizo. And so this is now available on Pathfinder Nexus. And if you are curious about what an adventure uh, looks and feels like on Nexus, this is a great place to check that out. You will see that as you are running the adventure, tool tips are present throughout so you can see things very quickly at a glance uh, you can click on them and sidebars will come out uh, with deep dive information mm -hmm. on the creatures in the adventure um, all the items used in the adventure and so on so um, I, again this is free content that everyone can try out and i certainly recommend that you try this adventure out because i've run it a couple of times and it is always a big a uh, fun time and a hoot. So Little Trouble and Big Absalom is now on the platform as well. And then on deck, we are working on the Slithering and Troubles in Otari. And uh, we are doing everything that we can to get those out as quickly as we can. So, uh, so we'll keep you posted on those. And we are getting closer and closer to uh, what's kind of in the upcoming slots, a little bit of stealing that thunder uh, here in just a moment, but uh, we are getting closer to adventure paths. And so we'll keep you posted as that goes along. We are deep under the hood for our character engine, which is going to power the character builder and the digital character sheet. Cannot wait for these to be live. I know that many of you cannot wait for it uh, either. Uh, we hear about it uh, every day and I don't blame you. It's, it's going to be incredible once this gets uh, live and out there. But um, you know this, this is gonna sound like a small thing when I say it out loud here, but it actually is a pretty significant milestone for us. We have built a background in the character engine uh so it's it, you know we, we have a background working and all of the things are uh you know pulling in and talking to each other and uh, and so again it might seem insignificant but uh it, it's a pretty big milestone that we are now at a point where uh real game mechanics are being parsed and that means that uh, you know we're going to be able to uh, take take further steps from there to build out all the rest of everything that's going on because we've really been deep uh, in in work on getting this engine itself going, and this is going to be very important not only for Pathfinder Nexus 
but also for World of Darkness Nexus and Free mm -hmm. League Nexus and any other Nexus that we might, uh, you know, share uh, here here in the uh, in the coming days. So lots of activity going on with the character engine. There's not uh, too much that we can show you yet, but we are going to start getting to a point where I will share some early uh, concept mock-ups of uh, the character builder and the digital character sheet because it will be very important for us to get a little bit of a temperature check uh, from the community and from players and fans out there um, as we uh, kind of start that process up. So, uh, so keep your eyes peeled in the next few weeks for some of that to start uh, coming through. But we're really excited about how everything is shaping up. And, uh, you know, we're uh, th things are things are looking good on that front. Some really great progress is being made. I know that that is me asking you to take my word for a lot of that. But take my word for it. It's shaping up really, really nice. And uh, and we can't wait to show off what, what's happening there. And then tonight on the air today. So this is going to be in the normal slot where we would have a Children of Erte episode so far, this fairy tale for grown-ups that Deborah Ann Wall has been running uh, has has truly been magical and uh, interesting and engaging. It's been a blast to play in that. Uh, we have an incredible cast. Um, I, I, I love all the people that uh, that I'm playing with uh, here, and uh, they just bring so much to this virtual table every single time that we play. And um, the the story has been uh, creepy, but we like it, which is just how Deborah wants it. And uh, and so I encourage you, if you have not already caught up on the first three episodes of the show, uh, absolutely jump into that. These are two hour sessions instead of four or five hour sessions uh so they are a little bit easier to to stay on top of and, and and consume so definitely check those out if you haven't gotten a chance if you've been following along then uh definitely check out on the air today tonight which is an after show and uh deborah is going to be the guest tonight so uh sam delev uh who i talked to last week during this dev update is going to host and they are going to try to grill Deborah as much as possible to find out all the secrets. I think that uh, Deborah, at this point in time in her career, has a great deal of media training, so she's probably not going to slip up. But you should watch and just see if she does and, and see what is revealed tonight on the air take. All right, let's jump to upcoming. So on the upcoming front... We have uh, Pathfinder Nexus early access phases, as we are very familiar with right now, Digital Reader and the Game Compendium. We are still working through adventurous content. Uh, things are, are shaping up really, really great with that. These books, uh, especially for the format that they are now in, you know, with this web format, we are really capturing a great deal of the character and flavor of each of these Pathfinder books. And the team's really proud of that. And, uh, and, and I think it creates a great experience. So if you haven't seen any of those books, you can certainly uh, pre-order those right now in early access, or you can try out Little Trouble and Big Absalom that I was just talking about um, that is available for free as an adventure. And then we have a Pathfinder Primer that you can check out uh, that is in uh, you know the rule book section. But, um, but tons and tons of that uh, character that Paizo does such a great job of infusing into each of these books is being captured in this format. And um, and so it has been very useful for us in our own games. And uh, we, we have appreciated the feedback that we've gotten uh, from folks out there saying the same thing. And also the feedback that we've been getting that, hey, this uh, margin is off here. And uh, because that is the kind of thing that helps us make these books um, a, a, as special as we want them to be. So thanks uh, so much for the help during early access with testing. And then this is a tease of a tease, I'm afraid. Uh, but uh, you should absolutely tune in for next week's dev update because we are going to have another special announcement. So uh, 
So check out uh, next week's dev update, and we're going to have uh, some some fun news to share. So that's all I can say. I don't want to accidentally uh, spoil anything, but but check out next week another special announcement. All right. I think we are going to jump into questions now, and I've got a few questions in here. And um, if uh, if you have them, go ahead and start asking those because um, I am only ten minutes in, and uh, you know we'll see if I can answer these before any others come in, and then I will uh, I will just cut out of here and, uh, and and get back to work. But if you have questions, ask them in chat right now, and I'll get to as many as I can. Rex Verdi, uh, you've had some epic moments playing TTRPGs on stream. What is the most you have ever been worried for your character in a stream game you've played? Uh, so in a streamed game, uh, so this, I, I will try not to be too long winded with this because um, I think it's going to, it would require a ton of context for, for this to, to land very effectively. But um, ultimately, expectations around a table are over the years, the thing that I have found to be the most important thing when you're playing with anyone with these games. And so for a good bit of the time that I have streamed, the expectations have certainly been different for different groups that I've played with. And so for instance, um, you know, I have played with, um, you know, three plus years, uh, you know, a character like Briv Steel Marrow playing that character, the expectations around the table were that this was going to be an over the top, super outlandish, um, just kind of romp um, through, through the multiverse. Right. And so the way the, the, the social contract that was going on around that virtual table as we were playing was that, you know, it wasn't incredibly uh, a deadly game. It wasn't like you were going to, uh, you were going to fall from poisoned rats. Uh, you know, that it, it wasn't that kind of game and it never was. And so, you know, as we were playing that game, um, because of the way that, you know, Dungeon Master and players uh, came together and discussed what was happening there, uh, the, the idea was you could be super, super bold and super risky because, you know, in the end, there was a, a decent enough chance that those kind of things would be pulled off and you weren't just uh, completely in mortal danger um, at, at every turn. And so, uh, by the way, that is not saying anything bad about that style of play because we had an incredibly good time, uh, you know, pl playing uh, that entire campaign, playing those characters. Um, typically when I am on a stream that is a one shot where I'm creating, uh, you know, what some people call a throwaway character, um, I, I typically don't treat it like that because, uh, because I like to think that they might have a future in some other stream somewhere. But, um, but, you know, as we're playing a one shot, um, very often you will know the tone of what that's going to be. So if I'm playing a call of Cthulhu one shot, I think that that character might not make it out alive of that one shot. Um, and if you're playing, uh, you know, so, some other kind of tone, then then you can get a pretty good feel uh, as long as you're communicating and open with the, uh, the GM and the players there. So uh, what I will say, finally getting back to the question here, is that um, I certainly in Children of Erte for these last three episodes have uh, have felt some worry, and especially uh, because at the end of the day, uh, I won't get into spoilers too much, but um, Silas's um, actions in you know the second episode in particular were um, Adam, the player, thought that um, it was going to be a little easier than it actually ended up being for the character, and so yes, there were absolutely moments where I was like oh, wait a minute, like this is going to be over with and I'm going to be, you know, th thinking of a new character uh, somehow. So lots and lots of worry uh, going on there. Um, but, uh, you know, Silas, based on the kind of character he is, he probably didn't let that show too much. But Adam, the player, was very, very worried about that. All right, let's see. Uh, Rakeem 
Dophilus, what is the first AP you are working to get onto Nexus? That is a great question that I don't know the answer to quite yet. Um, what I can say, I, I'm trying to think through this, um, the schedule in my head. Generally, what we are trying to do at this point, because um, uh, let me back up a second. As we were doing these sources, so when we were doing Lost Omens content, it was a challenge for us because we were doing the books out of release order. And when we started doing them out of release order, a book that we were currently doing would start referring to something that another book that came out before it, um, you know, did. And so then while we were doing the current book, we had to pause some of the activity like tool tipping, uh, linking to other things. And then we had to, um, make sure we took really good notes that once we went to the other subsequent processed book that had released earlier, then we had to, to come back and, and make sure that we were tying off the cross-linking and, uh, you know, some of the tool tips and so on. And so our current plan, um, I can't quite remember which um, adventure path was first released for 2E, um, but it is likely that we are going to start um, down that road and 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 continue to uh, move forward with them. Now, one thing that could change that is as we are performing the review here, if we understand that the connections between, um, because I know in generally ad, uh, adventure paths aren't going to you know tie into each other in those big ways. If we see that some of that cross linking and all that is not mm -hmm. as um, prevalent in the adventure paths. Um, which again, I suspect it, it might not be, then we might adjust some of those plans. But that's how we're thinking about it. And as we get a little bit deeper into it, um, as we finish the last of these standalone adventures, uh, I can get you an update on that in a few weeks. Oh, what, what was that? I've got a, a voice in my head. Age of Ashes, yes, yes, that, yes, that, that is, is right, and uh, so Age of Ashes likely is going to be first, that's our current plan, but again, everything that I just said could change that, and we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Rex Verity, uh, what are the background dev things that take a ton of time, but have big payoffs for players? The deep stuff that we as users don't see that is vital that you can talk about, of course, I don't mind talking about any of those things, because one of the things that I truly believe is that our team of developers, uh, and so um, internal in our company, we actually have a couple of different kinds of developers. And, um, and, and the way that we talk about things internally is we have a discovery team and a delivery team. Um, and so you're, you're definitely getting uh, into some of the, uh, you know, sausage factory stuff here with, with this answer. But, um, but this discovery team and delivery team, discovery, um, as you might could imagine from, from the wording there, they are, um, I, I think the best way to put it is the discovery team is uh, concerned, their utmost concern is making sure that we are making the right things whereas the delivery team's utmost concern is making sure that we are making the things right. And so um, as we're looking at it that way, we have uh, you know developers kind of on both sides. Now the delivery team has far more developers uh, from a percentage standpoint, but we got a couple of uh, what we internally call artificers that um, are uh, involved on the discovery side. And so all of the work that they are doing is the heartbeat of, of, of what we're doing here. I get to come and talk about it. Um, you know, uh, our community team gets to talk about it. Marketing team gets to talk about it. You know, so um, there is so much un, unsung heroism going on with what the developers uh, on, on both of, of the, the big teams are doing there. And, um, and so, you know, internally, there are, uh, you know, it does take a ton of time. It takes a ton of time to set up um, what we have done with the digital reader and the game compendium listings and our primers. Um, lots and lots of work was happening, um, you know, to make sure that that part of the platform came to life. Mm -hmm. What that means, though, the time that was put in there, because, you know, at the end of the day, we could have 
uh, probably cut some corners and made the digital reader and the game compendium come to life in less time that we did. But then now that we are starting to incorporate other games into the platform and not just one game, we are seeing huge dividends to that uh, work that we did on the platform level. And, uh, and you'll know more about what that looks like as, uh, you know, the, the second and third and eighth Nexus comes online, right? And so this is where, um, you know, that platform level work is incredibly important and it will let us uh, scale and it will let us move so much faster as we get down the road. The really wonderful thing about what we are doing with our character management piece and uh, everything that is happening with uh, the, the character, the rules engine that's going on with the character is that uh, we say this internally all the time. Pathfinder is a really, really rich game and it is a very crunchy game. And at the end of the day, if we can make the character engine work for Pathfinder, it is going to be a walk in the park to make some of these other games come to life in, in the character builder. And by the way, I want to, I want to be clear there that is not offering any form of negative judgment on Pathfinder or any of these other games. I love, and one of the reasons that I am here at Demiplane doing what we are doing is I love all sorts of these games. Like I, I enjoy playing so many different tabletop RPGs and the variety that is on display is a spice for me. And so um, at Demiplane, what we're trying to put together here, uh, you know, being able to create this character management feature for uh, Paizo and, and what's going on with Pathfinder here is uh, it is absolutely a challenge, but all the work that is going into the platform is going to make sure that we are able to handle the flexibility that is required within a system like Pathfinder 2E, all the optional rules, etc. In a past life, when I was doing some character things, um, we kind of got down the road a good bit and we were a little bit uh we were a little bit locked in on some things and it, it was very difficult to make changes it was very difficult to make um you know optional rules come to life uh within the the platform and so here with what we're trying to do there is when, when you say the dev things that take a ton of time in this question absolutely what is happening right now with our character engine is taking a ton of time especially um i'm sure if we're looking at it from the fan perspective like every we we all want everything like i wish i could watch you know moon night right now instead of waiting until you know 2 a.m tonight to watch it or whatever right you know so it's like um so i i get all of that but um but this kind of development takes a ton of time but the payoff is is going to be massive when we uh when paizo inevitably throws us a curveball of some entirely new system because the game experiments, the game does some great things out there of pushing interesting uh, mechanics out. Um, we don't want to be left behind when those things happen. And all of this work that we're doing on the platform right now is gonna be essential to make sure that we have something powerful and flexible enough to cover those things. All right, Rav Bunny, um, what is your favorite dinosaur? <laughs> and favorite star wars droid wow favorite dinosaur that is so so difficult um for me to answer uh because i am a dinophile uh big time and so um you know honestly with favorite mm -hmm. dinosaur it it might depend on uh you know which month you ask me because um you know i kind of um, this is going to sound super strange, but, but I'm going to let you in here. Um, I kind of have like just uh, thought stints on, uh, on dinosaurs. And so what I can say is at this point in time, very much been thinking about, uh, you know, um, uh, velociraptors and, and the, uh, the cousins of velociraptors. And one of the things that uh, triggered this for me was there was an old arcade game uh, that was called Primal Rage that um, you could play. It was a fighting game that you could play as dinosaurs. 
and um and basically it was it was kind of terrible when you think about it because it's like you were like scooping up like to heal while you were scooping up like people that were like screaming and running and like you scooping them up and you're eating them but um but anyway um but yeah it was uh it was a ton of fun and so that is what i am currently on a kick but i also love um you know uh, Bronto, Brachy, uh, uh, you know, uh, Sorai as well. Um, that moment in Jurassic Park, uh, which is one of the uh, defining movies for me in my life. Uh, I was 12 years old, went to the theater. It's the first movie I ever saw more than once in the theater, like, you know, at that point in time. Now I've saw Endgame 15 times in the theater or something, but, um, but it was instrumental at that point in time um and at that moment like i felt like alan grant um i felt like i was gonna pass out um so uh so yeah i'm a huge dinosaur fan and uh and right now i would say the uh the raptors and, and, and their cousins um and then favorite star wars droid also a really tough question it's gonna be hard for me to say anything other than r2d2 uh because r2d2 is just uh, when I was five years old and saw those movies for the first time in a single sitting as a five-year-old uh, white box set, VHS uh, box set before it was called A New Hope. Um, I'm very old, uh, but uh, R2-D2 is absolutely the favorite, but um, but there are some others. Uh, more recently, um, these IG droids that we're seeing um, ha have been super, super interesting to me as well. All right. Let's see, uh, Rex Verde, what makes you think you can leave before class is dismissed? Uh, excellent question. Your uh, your questions did not allow me to today, or my long-winded responses, maybe. Um, Fear Grounds, has any progress been made on World of Darkness content, or will that happen after Pathfinder is completed? That is an excellent question, and what I can say about that is um, it's going to depend on your definition of progress, um, but but what I can say is that we um, we are going to um, that we have dug into World of Darkness content, and what I can say is the plan is for um, World of Darkness Nexus to at least start coming online in some form of early access uh, before we are finished with uh, with Pathfinder Nexus. So we're going to have more details on that soon. But, um, you know, the other thing that I can kind of say is I don't know if we think of it in terms of being finished with Pathfinder Nexus. So uh, we, we have a very extensive roadmap. Um, we, we have a launch that we are uh, preparing for for Pathfinder Nexus that includes the digital reader, the game compendium and the character management pieces of what we're doing. But uh, we have, you know, encounter management planned for the future. We have combat try. You know, there there are other features that we are going to be doing uh, for Pathfinder. But if we are talking about launches completed for Pathfinder Nexus, uh, there is a strong, um, you know, uh, ninety percent chance that World of Darkness and other Nexuses are going to start coming online. Uh, with the features that we currently have completed for the platform, digital reader, uh, game compendium, um, before uh, some of the character management stuff is is in a launch state for, for Pathfinder Nexus. So sorry for a little bit of uh, being cryptic there, but um, but definitely it is uh, it is being worked on back to the, the root of this original question. Phoenix D. Black, you said before that you want to offer third-party content on ne Nexus. Were there any talks with third-party publishers yet? Um, this is a really... I, I like to be super truthful with all of my answers. And I'm afraid if, I, if I'm if i going like incredibly transparent with this answer here, that it's going to uh, reveal details that we're not quite ready to talk about yet. But at the same time, I don't want you to necessarily think that, um, uh, you know, get your hopes up about anything Pathfinder related. Um, the, the answer would, uh, you know, uh, be be more cross-platform for me. And it's going to, uh, uh, like I said, we're, we're not quite ready to talk about all those details. So the way that I will more specifically answer this, um, just to make sure that, that I'm not lying to anybody out there, is we have not had any talks 
at this point with third-party publishers for uh, on the Pathfinder side. And that is not um, out of a lack of interest or in anything else uh, with that, uh, but we are just focused with Pathfinder on making sure that we are covering the official Paizo content and doing it really, really well initially. And then um, as we make sure that we've got a great starting point with that, we're going to uh, start jumping in to exploring some of these other avenues. All right. I've got one more question. I'll go on and do it. I think I'm out of time, but I'll do this one. Anchor 89, do you have enough awesome sauce to get the team through the character builder? Will there be an API to allow those who are better programmers than me to build a module to import them into our VTT? Mm -hmm. Excellent question. And uh, what I can say is there will not be an API. Uh, there will not be a public API um, out of the gate because, um, you know, when you start talking about APIs, there, there is so much APIs are, uh, definitely an iceberg. So, you know, the part that everybody seems to like is that little tip above the, the water surface. And there is so much underneath the water that people don't really, really grasp fully most of the time. Uh, when it comes to an API, uh, the maintenance, um, you know, just the way that that works. And so there won't be one um, out of the gate because, again, as, as I said earlier in the, the last question, we are really focused on making sure that we are delivering uh, the best digital tool set possible for the games that we're supporting. However, what I will say is I also uh, know that you can do a whole lot of things with Chrome extensions and with uh, um, uh, th there's a, a lot of ways for community to developers to use outputs uh, from, from what we're going to be doing in interesting and creative ways. And, uh, you know, by and large, we welcome that uh, as long as no one is getting um, as long as no one is uh, getting shafted when it comes to making sure they, are, you know, that our licensees are getting, uh, you know, paid properly, uh, you know, as we are committed mm -hmm. to do with them. And as long as our teams are getting, you know, compensated uh, for all the hard work that is happening here, um, this is uh, this is something that that, you know, we welcome and encourage. And so um, I think that, you know, for the purposes of things like importing something into your VTT of choice, that all makes a ton of sense. And it makes it one of the very compelling reasons to purchase um, here, here with Demiplane and to, uh, you know, get into this ecosystem because what we are creating is going to be very usable in a variety of other places and can be used alongside VTTs um, or, uh, you know, any of those other kinds of tools and solutions. So um, I, again, uh, tr trying to thread the needle a little bit with that question, uh, but no, there will not be an official public API out of the gate. And, and again, if we see enough demand for it, eventually it's something that, that we would try to do. But, um, but at the same time, I have seen um, in the past that uh, people can do some very creative things and we are not going to be doing things to obfuscate things to the point where you wouldn't be able to do some of that as long as you are, uh, as long as you have that content unlocked and you own that content. Um, you know, th there are many options to try to make those, uh, those transitions um, and, and those integrations happen. All right. We are over time just a little bit. I appreciate all of the questions. Thank you very much for joining me today. Be sure to check out our after show for Children of Erte on the Erte tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, it's going to be Sam DeLev hosting with special guest Deborah Ann Wall. Check it out, 6 p.m. We'll see you next week. Later, Gators.